Everyone out there that has to rent right now knows that Wall Street is taking over the rental housing in the United States, especially in the Sun Belt. In today's video, I'm going to show you how Wall Street is probably going to own about 70% of all rental housing in the next 10 years, and our government is going to help them do it, and I'm going to show you how right now. Stick around to the end of the video to get all the information. I put out some other videos about Wall Street taking over. So all you have to do is Google Wall Street landlords, and you're going to find a number of articles right here. It said, according to 2022 report from MetLife Investment Management, four in 10 single family rental homes could be owned and controlled by Wall Street within the next seven years. So if you click on any of these articles here, here's one from MoneyWise, and you just read about it, Wall Street wants to buy your block. After the 2008 financial crisis, home prices had plummeted while the central bank had reduced interest rates to support the economy. Wall Street suddenly had access to cheap capital and cheap distressed assets. Here's what's going to happen next. If we go into any kind of recession and we begin to have foreclosures, they're going to buy up even more properties. The next thing we see is that they're partnering with big home builders. So another way they're going to try breaking in the market, and this will just be a test, Invitation Homes forms, forms a strategic relationship with Pulte Group to build 7,500 homes for the growing share of Americans who opted out not to buy a home. See, that's going to be in the news. Opt out to not to buy a home. Renting's better. You don't have to worry about maintenance. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. They're going to take away home ownership from Americans as much as possible. But the ultimate thing that's happening right now is going to be caused by our federal government. Our federal government is going to hand over rental properties to Wall Street. And here's how they're going to do it. So in this article from Truthout, it talks about a bunch of activists that had protested. And it says rent is too damn high and the Biden administration must act now to protect tenants from pro profiteering landlords who operate federally financed properties. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these activists were hired by Wall Street. I'm, I'm not kidding on this. If you go down here now and you look at the article a little further, it says the housing crisis keeps working families trapped in a cycle of poverty. Without a stable home or affordable rents, impossible to move out of unemployment to build up a financial safety net to safeguard against eviction and homelessness. It says right here, about 12 million total rental properties are backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in a federal program. So basically, this is where people go out and get a loan, and the loans are backed by the federal government. So what's the government's plan to stop this rental issue and try to keep prices down? And how is it going to break the back of mom and pop landlords, 40% of all the landlords, and give the homes over to Wall Street? It says right here, about 12 million rental units are, are backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in a federal program created by Congress and managed by the Federal Housing Authority that backs mortgages and home loans across the country. Each year, the agency oversees about $150 billion in financing for landlords by purchasing mortgages for approximately 25% of multifamily dwellings, according to the People's Action Homes Guarantee Campaign. And it says right here, after months of organizing by tenants and housing justice groups, the Biden administration is now considering a proposal backed by top lawmakers. Now, this is not a political statement by me. This is both sides of the government. These people are lobbied by Wall Street, both sides. And I guarantee you the lobbyists are probably proposing this bill. But it says the top lawmakers to leverage the FHFA's authority and attach rent controls and other tenant protections to federally financed home loans, which would be a major step forward in the Homes Guarantee campaign to establish a National Renters' Bill of Rights. So do you guys see what the problem with this is going to be? This sounds great, right? Keep rents low, put rental control on all government-backed housing loans. Well, who takes out the housing loans? Mom and pop landlords, common citizens. This would only punish people who get a loan backed by the federal government to buy these properties. Guess who doesn't take loans to buy the properties? Wall Street, wake up America. Wall Street would not have to abide by these rental caps 
And as mom and pop landlords decide that it's not financially worth it for them to continue to buy rental properties with these rules, they will let the property go and Wall Street will be the one buying it. Therefore, we predict that within the next 10 years, six to seven out of every 10 rental properties in the United States will be owned by Wall Street. And our federal government is going to be the one that's going to help them. And again, it's not just one administration or the other. It's going to be both sides because both of them get their pockets lined in the same way. Thanks for watching.